Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Dr. Mensa Odebill turns 50, and we're thinking about all the smart things he's learned in his life. From hugs with family to big wins, every moment teaches us something important. Life's like a big song. We're all different, but we're all singing together, even when things get tough. Life's a mix of good times and tough ones, but together, they make a beautiful picture. Let's remember the things Dr. Mensa Odebill's learned they can light up our way to a better future. Well, thank you very much for uh, your support last week and uh, for all that you continue to be uh, over the years. I'm just honored to be your pastor and to be able to serve you with God's word and to be able to minister to you all these years. It's been a great experience and I trust that the years ahead will even be better. Amen. Well, I'm going to do a message uh, appropriately. I mean, since we just celebrated my 50th birthday, uh, I'm doing a message that I've titled, 50 Lessons I've Learned Along the Way. <laughs> Amen. I think when you go through life, you learn some things. Some things you learn, they are good. Other things you learn not too good other things you learn to unlearn and some things you don't know you have to relearn and uh, on this journey there are a few things i've learned and i'm going to share them with you i cannot uh, put them into one uh session and i in fact when i looked at it it probably would run into several weeks but i'm trying hard to make it just a two-part message so i don't take too much time with it uh, so i'm going to do part today and then we'll continue next week please stand with me in your bibles to job chapter 32 and uh, verse 6 to 10 which would be my uh, opening text and then we get into the 50 lessons in job chapter 32 verse 6 we read so elihu the son of barakel the Buzite answered and said, I am young in years and you are very old. Therefore I was afraid and dared not declare my opinion to you. I said, age should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Great men are not always wise, nor do the aged always understand justice. Therefore I say, listen to me. I will also declare my opinion. I think that's appropriate. Listen to me. I will also declare my opinion. So, let's start. What's the first lesson that I've learned throughout these years? Number one is that I'm as human as everybody else. That's the most important lesson I've learned. You know, uh, when you are called a man of God, uh, sometimes you focus more on the God part than the man part. But we are not the God of men. We are men of God. Uh, that simply means we are just human beings. And I think for me to be able to keep my sanity, it's always important for me to remind myself I'm just a human being. A human being with the same limitations, with the same struggles, with the same fears, with the same anxieties, with the same hopes, with the same aspirations like everybody else. What I don't like, most likely, people also don't like. And if I can just keep myself in that frame of mind, I can understand people better. No matter how much I can do or how high God takes me, I'm just as human as everybody else. I'm no better, I'm no worse. I'm no greater, I am no less. We are just 
God's people, I'm just as human as everybody else. That's my first important lesson in life. Second important lesson I've learned in my lifetime is that without Christ, I am nothing. Christ makes all the difference. Yes, I'm human. But with God on my side and with Christ in me, there is a transformation. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He makes all the difference. With him, I can do all things. Without him, I can do nothing. Yes, I may be able to achieve something. But when we stand before God in judgment, it's only what we do in Christ that matters. What we do only by our strength will be burnt as chaff. So what the person that makes the difference in my life, where I am, where I've arrived, what I've accomplished, what I hope to accomplish, is all because of Calvary. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood. And he said, whoever will believe in him would have life. I trusted him as a young person, just as a young boy. And he changed my life. He gave me hope. He put direction in my life. He gave me gifts that I didn't inherit genetically from my parents. He made me better than what my parents hoped I would become. It's Christ who makes all the difference. And because he makes all the difference, it's always important at the end of the day to go back to him and cast our crowns back to him. It's very easy for you to think you've done all the things you've done by yourself. But it's always important to remember, Christ makes all the difference. With him, you can do all things. Outside of him, you can do nothing. Second very important lesson I've learned. And it helps me in, in all the things I do. Uh, in the in the targets I set my for myself, in the goals I set for myself, in the faith I have, in the things I believe can be done. I don't believe them because I am extraordinary. I believe them simply because I believe with Christ I can do all things. And because he is with me, I have no fear of what tomorrow may bring. I cannot predict tomorrow. But I know the Lord is with me, and he would make a way for me. With Christ, without Christ, I am nothing with him. I can do all things. Third lesson I've learned over the years is that God is no respecter of persons. His principles work for everyone, everywhere. This is a very valuable lesson I learned many years ago, because uh, when we were growing up, you know, uh, we felt that, yes, God was good. Yes, God can do anything and God can do everything. But uh, that if you are born uh, with this skin pigmentation and you're black, somehow you have limitations. And that some of those limitations are permanent limitations and they are lifetime liabilities and that you may not be able to overcome those limitations. But I have learned that God is no respecter of persons. What separates people is not who they are, but what they believe about God. That's what makes the difference. How they use God's principles. And God's principles will work in Asia, they work in Africa, they work in America, they work in Europe. If you would only apply his principles. Seed time, harvest time does not only work in Ghana. It works in Nigeria too. Sea time, harvest time works in South Africa, it works in China, it works in, in Russia, it works in Australia, it works in Azerbaijan, it works, it works in Iraq, in Iran, it works in New York, it works in Brazil. Sea time, harvest time is sea time, harvest time. If I plant a seed, I will get the results. God is no respecter of persons. And I had to learn that to be able to deal with one of the biggest challenges every black person grows up with, inferiority complex. The inferiority complex that tells you, you are not worth it, you cannot do it, you need somebody else to help you. You need somebody else to help you to achieve what you've achieved. Over the last week, I, I took a trip to my uh, old neighborhood and to the house I grew up in, and uh, 
looks very dilapidated and um, took pictures of the place. Just looked around, looked at our kitchen, which I thought was very big at that time. It looks very, very, very tiny. I don't know how we managed to enter that kitchen. And uh, the place we used to eat, very tiny. The bedrooms, very small. And six of us were crammed in that bedroom. I wonder, it's just about 10 by 12 rooms, small room. And uh, we were crammed there, some sleeping on the bed, some sleeping on the floor. And I just look around uh, and to, just to see how far we have come. And um, I remember I was with a friend and I was telling him when we were kids uh, there was a a particular area that uh, rich people used to live and uh, and most of the rich people were also white people and we used to go to their dustbins to go and collect their leftovers and their toys and and so on and what they didn't like was was Christmas for us you know and and I looked at all of that and, and at that time, I felt, you know, they were better off and uh, they had better ideas and, and they could achieve what I can't achieve. And, and as you grow up, you learn that, oh, white people are better. Uh, you are only black. The black man has a problem. And, uh, and all the things we say to put ourselves down. But I've learned God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't care whether you are black or white. He doesn't care whether you are tall or short, whether you are fat or thin, whether your parents liked you or didn't like you, whether you know your father or you don't know your father. God doesn't care about that. All you, he cares is whether you will trust him, you will apply his word. And whether you were born out of illegitimate relationship or whatever, he is able to use you. You may start from a small kitchen and end up in a palace. God is no respecter of persons. All you need to do is trust him, use his word, work with his word. That's my third important lesson. Fourth lesson I've learned is that no experience, no experience beats God's written word and the Holy Spirit's inner witness. I am not downgrading prophecy and, and all of those things. But in my life, the most important two things you must be sure of is that God's word is true. That when you read God's word in the Bible, you are not reading a fable, you are reading God's word. And that the second important way that you can know God is through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And it's important for each person to hear from God. Throughout my life, I've never had any major prophecy telling me what I'm going to do or what I'm going to be. When I was born, nothing great happened. Nobody saw me and said there was a light upon me. Nobody said I will be great. Nobody ever imagined I would turn out what I would, the way I've turned out. People didn't even believe I would be a pastor. But I knew in my heart God had called me. I just knew it. I didn't have to shout it. I didn't have to force people to believe it. I just knew deeply in my heart, not with pride or arrogance, but deep assurance that God had called me and that if I serve him, he would take me places, that he would use my life. That was an inward witness. It wasn't because somebody prophesied or somebody laid hands on me. These days people want all kinds of things. They want anointing oil. They want laying on of hands. They're going for prophetic meetings. They want one prophecy after the other. It's not how many prophecies you collect. It is what you believe about what God says. If, if God says in his word, what is surer than the word of God? If God puts a conviction in your heart, what is more important than that? The Holy Spirit does not live outside of us. He lives inside of us. And it's time we take God's word seriously. I have done what I've done not because people said great things about me or I, or I, I experienced some big um, vision and I saw a big angel. I, I didn't see any vision. I haven't seen an angel before. Either in a dream, a vision or reality, I haven't. I haven't. Some people see things. I don't see nothing. 
I just see what is written in black and white in the book. And God said to Joshua, he didn't say this vision shall make you successful. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall be careful to meditate in it day and night. And be careful to do it. And then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Instead of chasing visions and dreams, chase the word. Chase the word. Believe the word of God. Stay in the word. When God says something, hold him to his word. If he says, when you do this, I will do that. Do what you have. he says you should do. And then hold him to be faithful to his word. And God would never fail. He will never disappoint. And the things he tells you in your heart, they may not be loud. They may not shout. But believe them. There is nothing more powerful than the inward witness. I didn't have a great vision to start ICGC. An angel didn't talk to me. I just felt in my heart it was time for me to start a church. I didn't didn't go to people to say, well, this is what I've heard. Uh, What is God saying? Now, if I can hear what God is saying myself, how can somebody hear from God to tell me? If you can hear your father's voice, then how can you expect somebody to hear your father's voice and interpret your father's voice to you? It's important to have a personal relationship with God through his word and through the witness of the Holy Spirit. Know the Holy Spirit for yourself. That's the fourth important thing I've learned, that no experience beats God's written word and the Holy Spirit's inner witness. Fifth lesson. My character is the key to my destiny. My character is the key to my destiny character is everything character is who you are not what you want people to believe you are character is who you are in private and in public character is what you believe in character is what motivates you character is what inspires you character is how you see the world character is how you treat people and that determines your destiny That will determine who you will become and where you will arrive at. It's great. You can learn principles. You can learn things. You can rattle things from your mouth. You can go and study and get degrees. But character is your destiny. No matter how high you go, character, without character, you come down. But if you have character, it keeps you up there. What kind of character do you have? And how is your character determining your destiny when i was starting out we had all all kinds of young people talented people anointed people people who could do far far better i looked up to them i served them i i i trusted them but later i got to know some of those people in as much as they serve god and love god they also had another side of their lives I got to know some of them were sleeping with girls. Some of them were lying on the side. Some of them were unfaithful with money and all kinds of things. Some exaggerated, some told lies, some were pompous, some were arrogant. And eventually, people who were greatly talented didn't really live up to the expectation that we all had of them. Because they didn't check character. Your character is your passport to your destiny. Don't learn so hard and leave character behind. Character is the key to my destiny. It's a lesson I've learned and it's a lesson I want to live with. Lesson number six. When I make my wife happy, my home becomes happy and I'm happy. That if I want to be a happy person, my home must be happy. I don't want my home to be like like um what like like an elephant or or like a a lion's home that when i enter i have to run away i don't want my home to be a prison i don't want my home to be a place i hate i don't want to love outside more than home i want to be able to live at home and love my home and most people who know me will tell you i can stay at home and go nowhere as a matter of fact my life is quite predictable i'm either in church or at home And I can spend all my life with my wife and I'll be fine. 
the key to my happiness is to make sure my wife is happy because when women are not happy you will not be happy i'm telling you men if your wife is not happy you won't be happy if you want to be a happy man make your wife happy make her comfortable make her satisfied make her know that she's important to you she's number one there are no competition and competition may not be another woman competition may be your work competition may be a game you play maybe golf you play competition may be something else if you want your life to be happy let your wife know when she says something it's important to you you take it serious and you go out of your way to try to make her happy you cannot satisfy all her needs but make her happy and when she's happy she will smile but when she's not happy they're talking women are anointed to talk they're anointed that's that's the, that's what the gift god gave them talking and when they start talking they don't finish when they don't finish they continue the next day and continue and continue and continue so make them happy and they'll continue talking but it will be good talk it will be happy talk and it will make you happy and you will be at home when i started out as a pastor i thought the ministry was more important than my wife i had to learn the lesson my wife was more important than my ministry because if I don't make her happy, I can't even have time for the ministry. So I have to make her happy so she can release me to do the work of the ministry. And I can serve God wholeheartedly. So, lesson number six. When I make my wife happy, my home becomes happy and I am happy. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.